Now, probably the most used of all media generators are going to be the title ones. And you can see there's quite a lot of them. We've got legacy text, which we don't use anymore, and I'm not going to demonstrate. But we've also got titles and text for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll look at the prototype titler and the tutorial after that, credit rolls. And then we'll also start talking about plugins and other programs that enable us to do things like extruded text and 3D text and all kinds of bits and pieces. So text is really important. And if you go to titles and text, you'll see that you've got a whole bunch of animated titles available to you. Now, there's not a lot you can do about changing the actual animation itself on these particular ones. But they can be very useful, and there are a lot of them. And the chances are you will quite quickly find something that does what you want it to do. Pro type titlers does give us a few more options for, for customizing these things, but you can do an awful lot straight here inside of the standard titles and text. Now I'm going to take the standard one and drop it on the timeline over here so that I have a title event. And I'm going to go to the beginning of the event just so that we're all set up. And we're going to make some changes. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of text, backspace, enter to put it on two lines, and select it all and center justify it here. So that's now center justified. Of course, I can make it bold. And if I want to make it bigger, well, I can click the font size here and I can only go up to 52. But what if I want to make it bigger? Well, as long as the text is selected and the font size is selected, so it's blue like this, and I type in 72, you can see I can change the size to 72. So it's quite possible to change the size of the font. And of course, you can change the actual font itself. So I can change it to Simsun, whatever that might be, or any other one that you actually have on your machine that's available to you. OK, so you can change all of that, which is brilliant. However, notice this clock here. We can animate this over time. So if I click Animate, notice that I get my lanes and curves at the bottom. And it starts off with a red keyframe here, which is telling me it is a hold keyframe, which means it's not going to change until I create another keyframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward in time a bit, just grab the cursor and pull it forward in time a little bit to about there. Then I'm going to select all my text. I'm even going to change the font. So I'm going to go to straight veranda and I'm going to again select it and I'm going to change it to Vegas Pro. And I'm going to go a little bit further again, grab the cursor and pull it forward. I'm going to drag all of that and I'm going to change the font again I'm going to change something fairly different let's just try this one here select it and we're going to call it training and then I'm going to go forward a little bit further again I'm going to select it all I'm going to change the font again to something different reselect it and I'm going to change that to www.creativecow dot net which is where I hope you're watching the tutorials to support more tutorials in the future now look I've got whole keyframes all the way through so if I now go back to the beginning I've got my playhead or my cursor locked here the two are synced so it's gone to the beginning of the to the event here in the timeline if I click play it says sample text and then when it hits the first one it says Vegas Pro training on creativecow.net now obviously I've not got the font sizes sorted out and one of them is definitely slightly odd in the fact that it is sideways. OK, so it's a sideways one. So this particular font here is very different. So I'm going to actually select it and change it. Now, make sure you're over it when you do that. OK, it's really important. And if you don't know whether you're over it or not, remember, you can go previous keyframe, next keyframe, you bang over it. OK, then you can select it and change it to a different font. So I'll change it to anything like that. There we go. I've changed it and without creating a new keyframe. So if I go to the previous keyframe and then I was to actually put play here, Vegas Pro training. I've got something a lot more sensible on. Right, Creative Cow at the end there. So I'm going to go to the creativecow.net one. I'm going to select that. It's all selected. And I'm going to take its font size right down to, say, 42. OK. In fact, I'm going to take it even lower than that. You can see it doesn't quite fit on screen. So let's take it to 24. I need to select it all first. So take it down to 24. There we go. That fits on screen. So now I can go back to the beginning. Again, I can go to first keyframe and I can click play so sample text is what we started with and then we've got Vegas Pro training on creativecow.net and it's taken into account all of those changes which is really impressive 
So that's how you can actually change things and have them animate on the screen. Now, not only that, but you can also animate location. Now, location is done down here, and here is the location of the text. So you can actually animate where it's going to be on the screen. The only problem you might have, though, is that sometimes it's hard to create another set of hold keyframes. So if I say I want to animate the location, okay, and I'm now going to go to the next keyframe, notice this first keyframe is not a whole keyframe, but if I right click on it, I can't get hold of it. I can't change it to a whole keyframe. In fact, if you right click and then left click, it looks like you can, but it still won't let you change it. So it's impossible to be able to go in and change these keyframes, which means that when I move it around and I go between the two, what I'm actually going to end up with is a moving piece of text it's going to kind of move across the screen because i can't change them to hold keyframes it's just one of those limitations that uh, certainly doesn't seem to work at the moment i suspect it's a bug and that it will at some stage actually begin to work but at the moment you can't change those to hold keyframes so i'm actually going to turn off location don't want to animate location i'm just going to move this back to the beginning just into the middle here. The same actually happens with some of the other options you have in here. I'm sure it will be changed in time, but at the moment, all you can do for the whole keyframes is the text. Okay, so you can change the scale of the item, so you can actually have it coming towards you or going away from you. It's fully animatable. You can change the color, and at this point, if I wanted to add one of those various bits and pieces, a twist in or whatever, I can add it in here, and it can actually become an animated twist in. So I've got twist in, so if I go to the beginning of the actual clip again, so I'm just going to go here, and I hit play, you'll see it's going to kind of twist in. Now I'm not going to get full speed playback, but it does actually work. Okay, I'm going to get rid of twist in and take it to none. So you can always add the animation in after the event, once you've got the text sorted out. Now, you also have the ability to be able to change where the anchor point is. And you might say, well, why do I want to do that? Well, it's to do pretty much with this item here, which is called tracking in the advanced section. Notice at the moment that the anchor point is this little square in the middle. Now, when I pull the tracking in, it all goes into the middle and comes out from the middle. Okay, so I can animate the tracking to make it come in and out. But if I change the place where the anchor point is, so say I take it over here to the left, and I go to the bottom left, and now I do tracking, you'll see that what happens is the items track from the left. So you might want them to track from the left, to track from the right. Where you have the anchor point is where it's going to track from. You can see here it is down here. I can still click that and drag it. In fact, I'm just clicking here and drag it around wherever I want it to be. Line spacing is simply how close the two lines are to each other. Very simple, but it can be animated. So those are the advanced settings. Then we've got outline. Outline is, in effect, a stroke around the text. At the moment, it's white on white, which is going to look a bit daft. So if I go to black and take it all the way down, there we go, that's a black. Do bear in mind you've got the different color options, by the way, to, to, to play with it. But I'm going to make sure mine's black. And then the width of the line, well, actually, I won't see black, will I? So let's make sure it's a, a green. So there you go, green. We'll actually see green. And I'm just going to pull that out. You can see I can actually animate that, have it slightly or bigger or smaller. One of those issues about having a stroke, by the way, is if you have white text against a white background and you're doing subtitles, so you've got a light film with white text, they become impossible to read. So if you do put subtitles and you use this for subtitling on a film of some sort, make sure that you have a contrast between the text color and the outline. So that the outline is dark, the text is light, or the text is dark and the outline is light, which means that if you have light film, you read the dark stroke, if you have dark film, you read the light text. So just bear in mind that, that it's quite important to get these things sorted out. So I'm going to finish outline and finish off with shadow. Now again, I'm, I'm going to change the shadow color to something ridiculous, but there you go. I'm going to make it a bit yellow. There you go. Nice bright yellow, which might sound absurd, but actually I'm going to use this as a glow rather than a shadow. Now you can't see anything because you must enable shadows. There's a little checkbox there to enable shadows, so I'm going to enable the shadow and I've got to drop shadow. Brilliant. The strength or the, the blurriness of it is controlled here. So whether you want an ultra sharp drop shadow, which is effectively a second version of the text underneath, or you want an ultra blurred version to give a really soft background, the choice is yours by playing with the blur amount. And then the location of the shadow is controlled by the X and Y offset. X being across, because it's across, 
X's across, never mind, that's a bad joke, and Y being up and down, which means that at the moment it's looking like a drop shadow, and of course I can change it to look in a different direction depending on where the light can be perceived from coming from in the scene. But of course if I take it to zero, so if I select that and hit zero, and select that and hit zero, it ceases to be a drop shadow and becomes instead a glow, which I can change the intensity of with the blur amount. So I can have a very light glow or I can have no glow at all by reducing the blur to zero. So you can play with these things to create glows as well as creating drop shadows. And all of this is done on standard text which you can animate. Okay, now of course you can still go in, you can still go back to animation and make changes as you like. And you can create some really great text that can play beautifully on top of your various bits and pieces. And of course you've still got the alpha channel so you can see underneath it and you've still got the blend modes that you can play with to do all the other bits and pieces we've done in previous tutorials. So that's the standard, the most used titles and text. In the next tutorial we're going to have a little look at ProType Titler which gives us a few more options and it has a very slightly different layout than the titles and text. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful and thank you for watching.